Behind me, the void, the great empty, the expanse, the place with the black holes and gamma rays and stuff. Space. Space is an amazing place filled with innumerable cosmic mysteries and wonders, but it's also a place that you'd never want to experience or explore unprotected. I think that's why the idea of being flung out of an airlock like this one is so scary to us and is in so much science fiction. But is being blown out of an airlock something you'd actually have to worry about if you unfortunately found yourself on the wrong side of a blast door? Well, that depends. Now entering the facility. Getting sucked out of an airlock has so many examples in popular culture, I think the general public just assumes at this point that that's what will always happen if it happens inside of a spaceship. But I'm here today to question that assumption as science often does, because I think this question is something that science, math, nerdery can address. We begin this line of questioning with an even simpler question. When you get sucked out of an airlock, what is actually providing the force on your body? Well, of course, it can only be the air inside of that airlock before it is evacuated to the void. And when air is pushing or pulling on an object, we call that force a drag force. You know, a big drag, like um, the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, drag forces depend heavily entirely on the variables that go into the equations. Variables like the density of the air, the velocity of the air, the shape of the object, and how much cross-sectional area that object is presenting to the air. Now think about what tuning these variables in different situations actually means. The variables that factor into how hard air pulls and pushes on you means that if you're standing in an airlock when it's open to space, the more of you that offers itself to the air, the less aerodynamic you are, and the faster the air, if it's of the same density, the more drag force on your body and the more likely you are to be sucked out into the great expanse. And when you open an airlock door, air does indeed move very, very quickly. Pressurized to one atmosphere as a spaceship's interior would likely be, the airlock inside of a spaceship at normal temperature and pressure will have air particles, molecules, atoms bouncing around at between 300 and 400 meters per second. This is therefore how fast that air can react to a change in situation and how fast air can have information like a pressure wave travel through it because that's how fast the particles are going and bumping into each other. It's no surprise then that the speed of sound in this regular air is between 300 and 400 meters per second. Now if you were to open up this pressurized environment to space where there's nothing to get in the air's way, the fastest the air can possibly move therefore is the speed of sound and Mach 1 and that's indeed what would happen. Now, getting hit with air moving at Mach 1 certainly sounds like it has enough force to fling you out into space, but like trying to find a movie on Netflix to watch tonight, this situation is much more complicated than it should be. I mean, like, just play the next episode of The Queen's Gambit. I don't need a trailer for a new thing every two seconds. If I wanted to watch it, I'd watch it. I'd click on it. I don't want to watch the comedy special right now. Why would I want the trailer for it? Just shut up. <laughs> what we are really trying to determine here is whether or not this trope, as most commonly depicted in science fiction, will lead to an explosive decompression that will have enough force to fling me out into the big empty behind me. It turns out the answer is highly dependent on initial conditions. How big is the chamber? What pressure is the chamber at? What are the variables for the person about to be spaced? I'm going to estimate all of this for me and this exact chamber and put myself in the chamber in the way I think you see most often in science fiction. Me right up against the door, as close to you as I can get, begging for my life. Oh, don't do it. I'm a great actor. Now, keep in mind, I'm sparing you a lot of math here. This is much more complicated than it seems because all these variables, mass, pressure, velocity, all of this is going to change with time. If you want to see the full analysis, you can go down into the comments where I will hopefully remember to pin the full analysis, but in the meantime, let's just try it. Okay, Arya, count me down. Three, two, and breathe out. one, evacuating airlock four. Repressurizing. <sighs> well, that didn't exactly look like it usually does in science fiction, did it? 
Why? Well, positioned the way I am, very close to you at the front of the airlock, there's hardly any air in front of me to do the pushing. There's very little mass, yes, even with supersonic air exiting behind me. So what I'm saying is, this trope as most commonly depicted, as I am describing, is greatly exaggerated. You'd be accelerated with negligible Gs at velocities you could easily withstand. But that's not to say that this whole situation can't get very deadly, because <laughs> it definitely can. But we'll get to that in a second. I'll, I'll be right back. I have to deal with broken blood vessels in my eyes from the decompression. Hey, Science Sauce, Kyle here. You know, learning in science and education doesn't have to be all textbooks and taking down notes. No, it can be literally fun and games. That's why today's episode is brought to you by the lovely boys over at Vsauce and Curiosity Box. If you like science, math, puzzles, psychology, optical illusions, you name it, Curiosity Box is literally the best science subscription box you can buy. Just look at my desk here. It is the perfect gift for the science lover in your life and a portion of all proceeds from Curiosity Box go towards Alzheimer's research. It's a win, 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 win. And the best part is, what's inside each box is something you would actually want to explore, play with, and learn from. These are not just knickknacks. So if you want to go to curiositybox.com right now and use the offer code KYLE, you can get in in time to get the spring box, which includes a t-shirt that's actually an optical illusion dependent on distance. Yeah, it's all that cool. So go to curiositybox.com, use my name, and uh, get all that saucy goodness. That sounded worse when I said it out loud. But you should still do it. I did it. And look how cute Ink is. He's inquisitive. Ah! Back to the show. Welcome back. Like we said, where you are in an airlock during a spacing might make a huge difference. If you're at the very front with very little air in front of you, you might totally survive the ordeal if someone repressurizes the chamber afterwards. It's like being on one side of a pool and then asking whether or not opening the drain on the other side will make a big difference to you. Probably not. So what will happen if you are in the worst case? If you are at the back, very back of the chamber, just centimeters from space? Well. Let's find out. Okay, Aria, count me down. Three, two, Okay, one. breathing out so my lungs don't explode. <laughs> Retrieving the administrator. What you just saw was a full airlock's worth of air, dozens of kilograms, smacking into my surface area at over 700 miles per hour and me being flung out into space. But again, this is not what we usually see in pop culture. Yes, it is the effect that we want, but this is the worst case scenario. I try to make it as bad as possible. So even though this doesn't really help sci-fi's case, we did learn something today, and that's how to adjust all these variables in this airlock situation to best survive a potential spacer. So if you're on the other side of an airlock door about to be flung out into space by someone who probably looks like me, don't worry about it. The first thing that you want to do is get as close as you can get to that interior door. Have the least amount of air in front of you. You then want to make yourself as small as possible, have the least amount of cross-sectional area available to the air, maybe get down and into a little ball. You then want to breathe out. You do not want to hold your breath in space because that air will force its way out with 14 PSI, 14.7 PSI worth of pressure and it will kind of rupture and freeze and, and then finally you want to close your eyes and your ears to protect them and the precious membranes from this pressure differential. This is your best shot, dear viewer, at surviving, spacing, backed by your boy here and science. You're welcome. How are you feeling? Oh. Yeah, no, I feel pretty good. It's just that when I'm reconstituted from our frozen DNA stores, I, I smell like bacon for a week. Weird. I, it is weird. I don't, I don't know why that is. Until next time. Now exiting the facility. 
Thank you so much. Oh, I was just here. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for the direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant Ryan Berry and visiting scholar Maria Nolan. If you want to join the facility, if you want to continue on this conversation, drape on a silky white, silky lab coat onto your shoulders, get members only live streams, videos early, talk to me on Discord. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility right now. And if you support our <laughs> staff just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. What could I possibly... There are other variables you can mess with if you actually wanted to blow someone out of an airlock. There are old sci-fi stories, hard sci-fi stories, where they acknowledge all of this math and all of these drag forces, but to get around it, they change that one variable we didn't talk about today, which is density. So they would pressurize the airlocks, not to one atmosphere, like would be easy to do, but to like 10 atmospheres. So it has a lot more air inside of this volume, a lot more mass inside of this volume, and then when you eject that, it has much more force to fling bodies out. That's how they did space burials. But I don't want to be buried in space. I want to be left outside of the spaceship, then vibrated until I turn into frozen dust, and then stored on Dan Casey's desk. Thanks for watching.